Hey guys, Thunder E here, and in my hands, I've got the Galaxy S21 versus the iPhone 12. I want to find out which is the best in terms of speakers and gaming, because that's what we care about right here. So let's find out. Keep it loud. All right, guys, thank you for joining me on the channel. If you haven't subscribed already, hit the subscribe button and notification icon to watch more videos like this on the channel. So I do have the brand new Galaxy S21 and the iPhone 12, and I figured this was a good price point because this is, of course, the entry level within both of the series. Yes, I know there's an iPhone 12 mini, but as we've seen, Apple has cut production and is moving over to the 12 and 12 Pro, so, most people are looking at the iPhone 12 if you're an iOS user. And of course, if you're a Galaxy user, then the Galaxy S21 is the device for you. So looking at both devices, they've got, of course, uh, different cameras. We have the triple camera setup on the, uh, on the Galaxy S21. And we've got, of course, a dual camera setup. This is not a camera video, so I'm not showing, showcasing that. But go ahead and check out Super Sav's video on that. He does a good job on it, as well as, as, well as my buddy Danny Wingett. But what we care about is internals for gaming. But before we get to that, what about audio? It's really important in your gaming experience. Both of them have stereo speakers with the uh, Galaxy S21 using Dolby Atmos. So without wasting any more time, let's take a listen to audio from both speakers and then we'll find out. So they both sound good with the iPhone 12 having more of a bassy sound with the speakers, while the Galaxy S21 sounds a little much louder and more spacious. Now, I think the S21 sounds a bit tinny, uh, especially if you turn off Adobe Atmos, you can hear it more, so you definitely keep it on. Uh, but I want you guys to let me know which of these two speakers you like. I'm kind of in between both. I prefer the S21 Ultra, honestly, but I will say these two uh, on two different spectrums here but anyway let's get into gaming now we do have the snapdragon 888 on the galaxy s21 or the exynos version but my version here is the snapdragon version and we do have the apple a14 chipset on the iphone 12. so with the galaxy s21 it is a 6.2 inch display 6.1 on the iphone uh, 12. now in terms of refresh rate you've got an adaptive refresh rate of 120 hertz and of course, this is adaptive. If nothing's going on, on screen, it drops down. This is using the show refresh rate feature and developer options on Android, which you can use. While here we're using test UFO, showing us it's just 60 for the iPhone. So as gamers, we want faster refresh rates and the Galaxy takes the edge right there. Now, what about benchmarks? We'll start with benchmarks because a lot of people like that as opposed to just jumping into gameplay. We'll check out some gameplay sessions as well. So looking at our Geek Benchmark 5 benchmarks for both devices, we can see that the Galaxy S21 comes in a single core at 1,076, while the um, iPhone 12 comes in at 1588, so roughly almost 500 points higher than the Snapdragon 888, while the multi-core on the Galaxy S21 is at 3269, the multi-core on the iPhone 12 is at 4096. Man, that is huge. That is really massive in terms of the gap here. But to me, all of that means nothing until we look at how it performs with games. Now, as you guys know, I love playing uh, mobile games and the games we're checking out for this video is really simple. We're gonna be checking out, of course, Call of Duty Mobile, which is like a baseline for both, uh, PUBG Mobile, and of course, Genshin Impact. Now, now, you've probably seen me use different accessories to game on my, of course, Android devices and the Galaxy. I like to use the um, Razer Kishi, which is my go-to, but I do have others from 
Game Star and uh, you know uh, Flywheel, and I'll have the links for you down below. And for the iPhone, you saw that Backbone controller, and you're going like, what is that? It's a really cool controller. And I think probably the best controller for the iPhone. But let's take a look at our very first two games, and look at the, what we have in terms of benchmarks. Start off with PUBG Mobile, not Call of Duty Mobile, but PUBG Mobile, uh, with settings here at Ultra HD Ultra for the S21 we got 40 frames per second with 100% FPS stability. While for the iPhone 12, we got 43 frames per second with 99% uh, stability. It's two FPS more, doesn't really matter. But looking at the CPU usage, the iPhone is at 53%, uh, GPU is at 32. Now granted, GPU is not registered on the Galaxy. The CPU uh, is usage is ra rated at 10.94. Now, memory usage is much higher on the Galaxy at 840 in terms of the average memory, while it's 675 megabits per second on the iPhone. So again, very similar. FPS is higher on the, on the iPhone, but is more consistent on the Galaxy. Granted, it's only by three FPS points. So when we go over to check, of course, Smooth Extreme, which is the next setting you can use, or I like to use with PUBG Mobile, looking at the Galaxy uh, S21, 60 frames per second, 100% FPS stability, which is great, uh, while the iPhone is at 59% with 100% FPS, FPS stability. Again, this is marginal in the line of error, so I think that's fine. CPU usage here for the iPhone is at 56 point, uh, 5% or 50%, while the Galaxy, it's at 13.50. Again, it's registering low, maybe that would change when we get an update to supporting the GPU software, but again, it's just giving me that. But in terms of memory, we're looking at 863 for the Galaxy, while it's 671 megabits per second for the iPhone. So again, memory usage there is lower. Now, when we move over to Call of Duty Mobile, now, of course, this one we expect it to run well because the game always runs well. I mean, it's called Mobile, it's not intensive, but it's a good baseline just to check out. 60 FPS, 99% stability for the Galaxy S21 uh, with a 1,132 megabytes of memory usage. Again, CPU is at 10.81, so I'll kind of discard that because it's very similar there. Now with the iPhone, looking at 59 frames per second with 100% uh, FPS stability, and the memory usage is 941, so a bit higher here with Call of Duty Mobile as opposed to what we had uh, on PUBG. Now, of course, finally, we're gonna move over to you know Genshin Impact, which of course is a game that is graphically intensive. I, of course, set the game to 60 frames per second, which is the highest you can do. And on the Galaxy S21, uh, we're looking at 60 frames per second, 99% FPS stability. CPU usage just show up higher at 27%, and its memory usage is at 1,417 for its average memory usage. So much higher there. And when we go over to um, the iPhone 12, we're looking at 58 frames per second. So this is two frames lower and stability is also dropped down to 97%. And CPU usage here on the iPhone is really high, 93.59%. Now, again, I don't fully trust my readings for CPU usage on the Galaxy, but again, it's just really much higher here. And the average uh, memory usage is 1,130. So, what does that all mean? I threw numbers out there for you and you're going, okay, but Thunder E, we saw it ran well. And if you look at both gameplays, they run really well in any of those games I mentioned. What it means is simply this, both systems can run games really well. Uh, run the games you want to, and it looks like the Galaxy has caught up. We know that with the Snapdragon 865 or 865 Plus last year, we couldn't run Genshin uh, Impact at 60 frames per second with a high enough uh, FPS stability, and that has improved this year. So that is great to see uh, with that. And, I, and it doesn't really matter with benchmark scores because yes, the iPhone had higher benchmark scores, but it ran well. And it also doesn't really matter with memory as well because the Galaxy has eight gigs of RAM and the iPhone 12 is lingering around three or four. And that runs well as well. So it all depends on how things are optimized on the system. Now you're gonna ask me about temperatures. This is where 
Samsung has caught up with Apple. Now, usually we know there's a lot of thermal cooling on Samsung devices. They haven't mentioned much this year. The iPhone was running at about 103, 104 degrees. The Galaxy was also running at 103 and 104 degrees. So special cooling or not, it doesn't really do anything. I don't know if it has this year, but temperatures, they're running about the same. Now, when it comes to battery life, here is a little bit different. We know the Galaxy S21 has a 4,000 milliamp battery and the iPhone has a 2,850 milliamp battery. So there is a big difference between batteries and it shows while gaming. I can definitely attest to you that the iPhone battery drains much faster on the iPhone 12 than it does on the Galaxy S21. So if you wanna game for longer periods of time, the S21 is the device for you. Also, if you're using 5G, whether it be gaming or anything else, the iPhone 12 just does not cut it. It drains really fast. And I think this is just because the uh, 5G SoC chipset is not uh, on the same die as, of course, the chip, as opposed to the S21 where everything is all on the same die. So it's a, it's a bit more efficient. I think overall though, if you're looking at both of them as devices for gaming, day-to-day -day use, you find that they do both work well. Now, if your worries are battery life, uh, you know, and temperatures, I will still lean over to the Galaxy S21 because you get longer battery life and will perform just as well with all the games you want to. So there it is guys, let me know your pick. Is it the Galaxy S21 or the iPhone 12? If you have any questions or any comments, leave them down below. Otherwise, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and always enjoy your entertainment.